Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at an interesting equation. Now why do I call this interesting? Because it has too many variables. We have A, we have B, we have Z and I is obviously a constant, right? Hopefully you know that. I is the number whose square equals negative 1. Go ahead and check out the lecture videos that I made if you're new to complex numbers. Now, we're going to be solving this equation for z, where a and b can be considered different parameters, meaning that a and b are given numbers. For example, uh, what would happen if a and b are both 1? Then we get a solution for z. What happens if they're both 2 or one of them is 2, the other one is 3? We get another solution. So we basically get a family of solutions for different values of a and b. Can a and b everything? That's a good question. One thing that we're going to start with is one requirement that we have is b minus a does not equal 0, right? That's definitely needed. And this just means that b and a have to be different. They cannot be the same. Otherwise, the original equation is going to break. Now, next, we're going to cross multiply. But cross multiplication is actually a little different than the original one because we're going to Basically, we're not going to have that requirement anymore, but we do need to have that. Okay. Anyways, I hope this made sense. Uh, kind of confusing, but let's go ahead and cross multiply. We get a z cubed plus b z equals b minus a multiplied by i is just going to give me b i minus a i. And what is this channel called? A plus b i. Okay, cool. So now we want to solve this equation. This is cubic. So I think one of the ways that I could probably call that the first method, right, is going to be the cubic formula. Why? If you put everything on the same side, this is going to be b minus a, but if I put it on the left hand side, that's going to be a minus b multiplied by i, and this is going to be my cubic. And guess what? This doesn't have z squared, so that's a depressed cubic, which is perfect for the cubic formula. So here's how we proceed. We kind of, to be able to solve this first, we have to get rid of the a. So let's divide everything by a. We get z cubed plus b over a z plus a minus b over a multiplied by i equals 0. Since a is not going to be 0, well, we assumed at least that in this case, a does not equal 0. We're allowed to divide by a. Okay, if you want to simplify this process a little bit you can assign uh, different variables to this like you can call this c i don't know and you can call this d so that this equation is going to look i don't know why i switched them around but anyways you can call uh, make it look a little simpler right and then use the cubic formula and then back substitute you can definitely do that so let's proceed with that and now how does the cubic formula apply right well, here's how the cubic formula applies. Let's go ahead and use m and n for this. Normally, I would use a and b, but I can't. So m plus n cubed minus 3mn multiplied by m plus n is equivalent to m cubed plus 1 cubed. Hopefully, you know this identity that comes from the binomial theorem, if you think about it. And I'm going to go ahead and call this z. And then we get a cubic equation in z. And then this cubic equation is compared to the original cubic equation that we have, which is this one. And then we can kind of uh, set these coefficients equal to something and then come up with a system. Make sense? That's how the formula works. I'm not going to finish this up because that's going to take a while. And you can definitely do this on your own. I'm curious about the results. Please let us know. But from here, by comparing the coefficients, like coefficient of z here and here, we can safely say that negative 3mn is going to equal d. And m cubed plus n cubed is just going to equal negative ci. And why do I say that? Because ci is on this side, but if I put it on the right hand side, it's going to be negative ci. Make sense? So I can write down my system like this. And then do a little bit of algebra here or arithmetic, whatever. You can write mn equals negative d over 3. Oops, I put a c. And negative 3 over 3 negative d over 3, and we get this. So now, this looks like a cubic system, doesn't it? But it's actually quadratic. 
So one thing you can do is cube both sides in the second equation. That gives you negative d cubed over 27. By the way, there's a formula that you can memorize, so you don't have to go through this every time, but I just wanted to show you the methodology here. And then from the first equation, you can kind of isolate one of these, like for example, maybe n cubed, you can write as negative m cubed minus ci, and then substitute that here. Make sense? So you'll get m cubed multiplied by negative m cubed minus ci equals negative d cubed over 27. And then distribute, you're going to get m to the 6th and m to the 3rd. And set m cubed equal to like something like a, I don't know, t maybe. I would use n, but t is better. So we would get something like this, negative t squared minus cit equals negative d cubed over 27. And if you put everything on the same side, you'll get a quadratic in t. And now by solving this with the quadratic formula, you're going to find the solutions going back here, so on and so forth. You see, super duper painful, isn't it? That's very painful. But hopefully you're going to get the same answer that I'll be getting with my second method. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method here, which is obviously, I mean, in my opinion, nicer. So you'll get to decide. So let's get back to where we were with the equation after the cross multiplication was done. Right? After I cross multiply, I got something like az cubed plus bz equals bi minus ai. So, how do I know that? Because I took note, and you should do the same. If you're solving a problem, uh, don't lose, you know, don't keep track of things. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put everything on the same side again, but this time put the a's together and b's together. And obviously, this is a special scenario. So this could appear in a math contest, right? Some people call it contrived. And we're going to factor by grouping. First of all, take A out and then B out. And what do you notice? Tell me. Well, we were expecting to get the same thing from here, right? But guess what? ZQ plus I is divisible by Z minus I. How do I know that? Because I is negative I cubed. So I can replace i with negative i cubed. And how do I know that? Because i cubed is negative i, therefore it works. And now this is factorable. And this is difference of two cubes, so I can kind of write it as z minus i times z squared plus iz plus i squared, but that's just negative one. And then now we get a common factor, which is super duper nice. And then I can now take out z minus i and the other factor is going to be quadratic. Let's distribute the a. a z squared plus a i z minus a plus b. Awesome. Now, z equals i, do you see that it's a solution, right? z equals i is a solution. And the other solution is going to be coming from our quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is a squared i squared. By the way, I can write this as negative a squared. Maybe I should do that, right, real quick. Negative a squared, that's b squared minus 4ac, 4 times a times b minus a. That's going to be my c, and in that, all of that is divided by 2a. Let's simplify this a little bit. We're going to get z equals negative ai, not artificial intelligence, just ai, and then negative a squared, and then I have 4a squared, right? Wait, I should be getting, uh, let me check something real quick. B squared minus, B squared minus 4A times B minus A. Okay, that makes sense. So this is going to give me 4A squared minus A squared. It's going to give me 3A squared minus 4AB. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Divide by 2A. And then this should give us the other two solutions. But guess what? Uh, obviously, we do need... Uh, two conditions here, or not two cases, I should say. This can be positive, in which case we're going to have a real discriminant, or this could be less than zero, and in, this, in that case we're going to have a uh, non-real uh, square root, whatever. So, you can look at those cases, but I want to look at the original equation with the special scenarios. So, let's get back to the very original, and we're going to look at it from another angle. What happens, for example, if a is 0? 
replace a with zero in the original equation. Uh, these are going to disappear. We're going to get bz over b equals i. b is going to cancel out if b does not equal zero, of course. And from here, we're going to get z equals i, which we already got, right? That's interesting. But if b and a are both zero, obviously they can't be equal, so this is going to fail. If b is zero, let's just look at it separately. We're going to get a z cubed divided by negative a equals i. a is going to cancel out. We're going to get z cubed equals negative i. z cubed equals negative i. And you know what that means? z equals i. Again, but there are more solutions because you kind of have to look at the cube roots of negative i. And i is just one of them. How do you find the other ones? Think about it. The cube roots are going to be distributed like... Um, 120 degrees apart right, or 2 pi over 3 and if the first one is i right here oops i didn't want to delete it right i wanted to change the color so if this is one of the roots and the next one is just going to be 120 degrees over and then add another 120 degrees and you're going to end up here and i'll just make this type of shape right and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.